Good day, everybody. Meteorologist Mark Muller here. How's everybody coming along off the weekend? Here we're taking a look at the tropics. See if that tropical wave, there's going to actually be a tropical wave affecting the northern Lesser Antilles, parts of the Caribbean islands. We'll see if that develops into anything this week. And Pacific side, we've got the hurricanes lining up as we go into the medium term here. We'll take a look at all those and severe weather. Is this severe weather across the northeast and parts of the mid-Atlantic, is this going to break the heat? How quickly is it going to move out? And are we seeing a new pattern arise? Let's take a look. All right, so take a look at the eastern Pacific here. This is what we got going on. This is Invest 97E just coming onto your screen here on the far right. Definitely going to watch for this for our next name storm. This system out ahead of it looks pretty healthy, too. We'll have to continue to watch that as well. And there is the Mexican monsoon. Look at that just blowing up as we get past 2, 3, 4 p.m. You can see that really flare up just inland. And look at this. We got some tropical waves out here. This is a big one. Just came off the coast. Another one that we're going to be watching and there's a little bit of a system here, but we're definitely going to be watching, you know, see what comes out of this area because definitely something is going to be traversing across the Atlantic. And I'll show you what I mean here on the models momentarily. And we don't really have much to talk about here. We just got some residual moisture here from a front here in the eastern uh, Gulf of Mexico. Just nothing really to talk about over here, though. We do have some showers and thunderstorms across the Caribbean. These flare up during the day. But you know what? There's not really much to write home about here. All right, so let's take a look at the entire tropics here. Take a look here, eastern Pacific. This is the area that we're going to see within five days, about 80% chance. Definitely seeing a pretty good chance of development here across off the south coast of Mexico. But here it is, right out over the eastern Atlantic here. Take a look at this. We have quite a bit in the way of action. Hostile environment out here, though. So definitely, you know, not very impressed uh, but, you know, we head throughout the rest of the, you know, Pacific here. Not too much. We got a few features, you know, systems to worry about out here in the Western Pacific. But let's take a look. You know, the, the feature that's going on here in the Eastern Pacific happens to be in this region. And then we got another wave back here towards Panama. So let's continue to put this into motion here, see what we got going on. And, you know, you can see that kind of gets a little bit better organized, you know, through Tuesday, July 26th. Take a look what's happening here. So you got a couple waves out here off the Cape Verdes. Definitely want to keep an eye on those. But you know what? Down here across the eastern Pacific, this is where things are going to get a bit interesting. Now you see up here, this is associated more with the monsoon up towards north of Acapulco and Puerto Vallarta. However, look down through here. This is where we have that next name system that could be developing this week. So definitely want to keep an eye on this. So let's continue to put this into motion here. See what we got going on as we head throughout the rest of the week. So, let's kind of pinwheel our way this direction. So, look at this. So, yeah, we could be looking at our next name storm in the Pacific. And you see there's another one forming kind of behind it here. So, last week I showed you this system. It was kind of, you know, closer to the Mexican coast here. But this time it's actually looking like it's heading out further out to sea, which is good news uh, for those Mexican resort towns. So, definitely looking good. This is interesting because look out here. This is where we're going to start to see something out here in the uh, Atlantic. So some sort of tropical wave is going to develop out here. Um, so we'll continue to watch for this. You know, here's some showers and thunderstorm activity associated with it here towards the northern part of the Lesser Antilles. This is Friday, uh, July 29th. So let's continue. Look at this. So here we go. There's that system right off the, you know, Mexican coast. It's... Kind of heading out to sea there. So thankfully it's staying pretty far away. But as you can see, definitely looking pretty interesting out here. Could be a hurricane by this point. You can see it's kind of trying to form an eye here. So let's continue to put this into motion and we'll see if anything comes out of these systems here in the Atlantic. Well, here's that next system that could be a named storm here off the southern Mexican coastline. And we're watching this system here. As it approaches, this is, you know, by uh, July 30th, July, uh, July 31st, south of Puerto Rico. Take a look at that. So we continue to put this into motion. Let's see if anything comes out of this. Well, look at that. It's kind of like a spin up here south of Hispaniola. If we take a look, this is Sunday, July 31st. So cruising on towards the west, keeping it a little bit weaker, which would keep it into the Caribbean under this scenario. Uh, don't have any waves behind it. But look what's going on here in the Pacific. Wow. This looks like it could be becoming a pretty big hurricane. There's Cabo San Lucas up there. 
And then look at what's behind it here. Another potential name system here in the Eastern Pacific. We're just going to keep lining them up here as we head west. And look at this. Over here in the Pacific, we could be looking at a couple systems south of Japan here and just east of China. So definitely want to keep an eye on that. And as we continue in time here, let's see if we have anything on the horizon in the Atlantic beyond that just one tropical wave. Well, here it is. It's continuing to head towards the west. It looks pretty weak at this point. This is August 1st. So we have some smattering of showers and thunderstorms just south of Cuba here. We'll continue to watch it, but, you know, we're not so impressed with it at this point. And another system looks like it's trying to form like a hurricane out here. Another hurricane here heading out to sea into the Pacific. So let's continue here as we go throughout the first week of August. Yeah, this is, this is interesting because, you know what? If we look out here in the Atlantic, we still don't have too much of anything. And if we go back just slightly, it seems like what's left of that system kind of propagates across western part of Cuba here. And if you watch what happens here as we go throughout time, take a look at this. You see it kind of just disappears. So, you know, the environment is still a bit hostile. But look at this. This is by Saturday, August 6th. We have some sort of system trying to get its act together in the Caribbean. Remains to be seen whether it stays Atlantic side or heads into the Eastern Pacific. But as you can see here in the Eastern Pacific, things are going to be pretty active as we continue in time here. And look at this. Here's that feature in the Caribbean. You can see, definitely trying to get something going here. So we'll, we'll check the Euro and see if it's showing up here on the Euro. We do have some interesting weather up here in the parts of Florida as well. This might be associated with that tropical wave from earlier the previous week. So we'll keep an eye on it here. Something might try to flare up as we head on into the month of August here, especially the second and third week of August. I think that's when things really start to flare up in the Atlantic. All right, so taking a look here at the Atlantic, there's that uh, tropical wave we're going to be watching over the next several days showing up pretty well on the Euro here. So as we continue in time, Let's take a look. One thing you notice, too, the high pressures are a little bit further south and west, so they're exerting their influence on keeping these storms uh, towards the west-northwest instead of having a chance to head anywhere towards the east coast of the United States. So let's continue in motion with this. And as we head towards throughout the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, July 27th, you can see the system pretty well holding its own here across the main development region of the Atlantic. And there you can see the Eastern Pacific continuing to spin up these storms, just relentless here in the Eastern Pacific. Thankfully, not too much threat to any land. But as we continue through, here we go, Friday, July 29th. So there's that system. It is approaching the Lesser Antilles in the form of a very large open wave here. So definitely going to bring some showers and thunderstorm action there, you can see, to the Eastern Caribbean islands. So... Definitely, if even if it doesn't develop into anything, definitely looks like a big rainmaker. As we head through Monday, August 1st, the first week of August, you can see we have a, some stronger tropical waves coming off the coast here. Still pretty far to the south for this time of year. Um, but you can see finally the high pressure starting to retreat to the northeast, and that's key because that will allow this intertropical convergence zone to kind of pinwheel a little bit more towards the north here. And then it'll get some of these systems ha having a chance to either recurve or head towards the east coast or the eastern Gulf of Mexico here, you can see. So not too much activity as we head there into the first week of August. All right, so we've been following on Sunday a lot of severe weather in the northeast, and that carries over into Sunday night. You can see by 10 and 11 p.m. here, you got some hefty thunderstorms here across upstate New York, just north of the Binghamton area, Ithaca, Syracuse, and then over here into northwestern Pennsylvania. So we'll be dealing with a couple areas of some thunderstorms really pushing through here. And look at that back towards through portions of northwestern Ohio as well. So let's actually get this into motion here, and we'll head throughout the rest of the night. You can see things really start to conglomerate into more of a flash flooding event, although you definitely need the rain. Uh, but some of these cells could be strong to severe, even towards the Capital District in New York. So things really staying confined here to western part of New York. So let's continue to go into motion here. This is 2 a.m., 3 a.m. Monday morning, really early morning. Things pretty much start to consolidate into a solid 
line at this point. You know, heavy rain will be the main threat out of this, but it starts to kind of bog down. You can see the forward motion, you know, as the front slowly heads east. It has a real hard time getting into some of this warmer, drier air here into parts of the northeast. So, the, you know, the drought definitely taking its toll here across the northeast, but uh, we're going to continue to watch it here because some of these cells, you know, could still be kind of strong. But look at this. By 8 a.m. Monday morning, the front pretty much you can see kind of coming through in a fashion like this. So we'll continue to watch it here, but I don't think on, let's see if we go into the rest of the day on Monday, see if we got any stronger cells. We do have a line that tries to form up Binghamton up to Albany. Here, some stronger cells might try to form you know, on the back end of the system here. Uh, but let's see, if we continue throughout the rest of the afternoon, that kind of slides to the north. wilkes bear scranton area, you can see here down and through Harrisburg, southeast of the Capital District in New York, 2 p.m. here. So we could still have some severe weather heading on into, look at this, up here into parts of New England as well. So definitely going to keep an eye on this, you know, Definitely don't want to turn our backs on this, so we could still have some stronger cells. This is by 6 p.m. across southeastern part of New England. Um, so definitely want to keep an eye on that. Look at down in the, the Virginias here as well. Some stronger cells trying to kick up here. So let's see if this is going to be a fading memory heading on into Tuesday. Look at this. This looks like it is. Look at it. Shaping up to be kind of a pretty nice day. With the exception, you could be clipped by a few showers and thunder showers into parts of the mid-Atlantic here towards 2 p.m. on Tuesday. But for the most part, most of the Northeast eking out a pretty good day here. All right, and going forward here, are we going to see that active severe weather pattern continue this week? Well, here's the jet stream for later Monday. We still have that severe threat in parts of the mid-Atlantic and eastern New England. But as we continue in time here, you can see there's kind of a trough setting up here. You can see this 500 millibar uh, low pressure here across parts of central Canada, and that's going to pinwheel systems down here. It's going to be a more progressive pattern um, at this point, so we're going to definitely continue to see some severe weather across parts of the Midwest. Um, but here across the east, that's going to be a little bit further to the south, more into the southern mid-Atlantic, into parts of the southern states as we continue in time here. And as you can see, we get a little bit towards Thursday. We definitely could have, you know, a return of southerly flow here in parts of the Great Lakes and northeast. So definitely some possible severe weather. But that will kick out for Saturday into Sunday. And look what returns here. This is a very benign calm pattern. You can see the isobars at this point, uh, these flow lines at this point looking pretty far apart here across parts of um, the northern plains in the Midwest here. So definitely looking uh, like a more divergent pattern here. There's no convergence going on. So this signifies to me that we're definitely going to be heading into a very quiet pattern for your first week of August. Look at this. There's no large scale systems to speak of. All right, so this past Friday, take a look at what happened here. John across the Islip, New York area, dealing with a EF1 tornado in the area as well as strong winds, very large hail, and just one-fourth or less visibility. Look at that. So, yeah, this has been like the key across much of the Northeast. This is going to be the key also to breaking the heat. We're going to have to bring on those severe thunderstorms. And that's what uh, John was dealing with here across Islip, Long Island here. Nice captures there, John. All right, so let's see. Is this heat wave going to break? Well, let's take a look here. We'll still start with Monday. Yep, there it is. Look at this. This is what I wanted to show you. 70s spreading across the Midwest into parts of the Northeast, lower 80s as well. We're still holding on to one day of 90 degree with some of the severe weather waiting for the front to come through in the northeast. Still just record heat across the southern plains. It's not as hot though and look at that out west. We're pushing up the heat as we push down the cool in the east. We push up the heat in the west. Let's get into Tuesday. So look at this. It's staying below 90 in this big old section. You know, seven upper 70s, low 80s on Tuesday and into Wednesday. Look at this. This is This is nice. This is very nice weather into Thursday, July 28th. Look at this. You get a little bit of a warm-up into parts of the northeast, mid to upper 80s. Um, but you know what? Watch what happens. This this air into Friday is going to head east. Watch this. 
Yep, look at that. So definitely a lot of 70s. We're even pushing 70s down into parts of the Ohio Valley here. That is nice. And as we head on into the close to the first week of August here, yeah, you can definitely see there's a trough here, but it's not a very active trough. So it's going to bring you that cooler air that you wanted. Extended outlook for my hometown viewers, Upper Susquehanna River Valley. Monday through Friday, look at this. Yeah, we'll have some scattered showers and thunderstorms Monday morning, mainly before 10 a.m. But the rest of the day should be sun and clouds mixed. 82, we break that heat wave. Look at that. We're much lower dew points heading out through Monday afternoon, Tuesday, Wednesday. It gets a little warmer on Wednesday. Uh, but uh, that's good sleeping weather, 55. Look at that. Thursday, we have a chance of shower or thunderstorm at the cold front. And look at that. Saturday or Friday, 79 degrees, sunny skies. As always, thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Eastern. Links in the description down below if you haven't watched my Outlooks, Hurricane Outlooks. Uh, Facebook and Media Mark, also Hurricane Northeastern, also Weather Northeastern, also Susquehanna Weather. You can also visit me at MediaMark.com, WeatherNortheastern.com, and Twitter at WeatherEastern.